before talking about profit maximization, let's talk about what perfect competition even means. Now we make some assumptions here about the real world and they're not true, but here's what they are. We're assuming that there are no barriers to entry in a perfectly competitive market. Uh, what that means is anyone can just set up shop and, and sell their thing. Now, another assumption is perfect information. So when somebody else sets up shop, everyone automatically knows about it. So no marketing needed. Another assumption is that there are identical products meaning you really can't distinguish uh, whether you know, this producer sold it or that producer sold it. So for example, let's take the banana industry. Let's say you're selling bananas, and if you're in a perfectly competitive market, what that means is that there's no barrier to entry. Anyone else can open up a banana selling store. Uh, what that also means is that the products are identical, so a customer wouldn't be able to tell whether they bought that banana from you or from some other producer. Now, Here's a consequence of these assumptions. Any firm in perfect competition is what we call a price taker. What that means is that whatever price every other banana vendor is selling their bananas for, that's exactly the price that you have to sell yours for. So if everyone else is selling bananas for a dollar each, well then, you have to sell bananas for a dollar. If you sold bananas at 101, a dollar and one cent, you will sell exactly zero bananas. No customer will want to buy it from you because of all those assumptions. So really what your demand curve ends up looking like for you as a firm individually, not the market as a whole, just you as an individual business, your demand is totally horizontal because you can sell whatever quantity you want, but the price you sell your bananas for has to be at one dollar. So your demand's technically perfectly elastic, just to bring up an old topic, but that's what that means. A mathematical way to say price taker is that P, your price, equals MR. So MR is marginal revenue. It's the revenue you get from selling one extra banana. So if you are in a perfectly competitive market, then your demand, your price always equals your MR. What that means is that uh, if you were to sell one more banana at exactly one dollar, your revenues, your marginal revenue, the revenue that you get for that one extra banana, is always a dollar. So, as we'll see later on for other types of uh, firms that are like a monopoly uh, or something like that, their P does not equal MR. But for now, one thing that makes a firm perfect competition is that the price always equals MR. So now for the question, how do you maximize profits if you're in a perfectly competitive market. Let's first talk about what profits actually are. Now, the notation for profits, usually in economics, is pi. No relation at all to 3.14. The reason we use pi instead of p is because we're already using p for price. So now there's no confusion. If you see a p, that's price. If you see a pi, that's profit. So the main equation for profit is that it's total revenues minus total cost. Total revenue is how much money you're bringing in in sales from your customers. Uh, and total cost is just what we've talked about, your, how much you spend to produce the goods. So revenues minus cost is kind of what you have left over, and that's your profit. Now, another useful equation for profits is this. It's actually the exact same equation written in a different way. And as we'll see, if we use this, it sometimes makes it easier to calculate it or to visualize it graphically. But, so it is important to know this equation. It's uh, Q times P minus ATC. First of all, just mathematically, why is it the same thing? If you multiply the Q out, distribute it out, Q times P is your total revenue because how many items you're selling times the price at which you sell each one for. If you sell five items for 20 bucks each, five times 20 is how much revenues you make. Minus ATC times Q is your total cost, which we saw from the previous module. So that's the same thing. Now practically, one way to think about it is price is how much you're charging your customer. And what does ATC even mean practically other than TC over Q? The real world interpretation of ATC is when all is said and done, rent and everything included, it's how much it costs you to make on average every single item that you sell. So if you're selling something at a price of $5 each and it costs you on average $3 to make each unit, uh, each unit, well then you're making a $2 profit per unit. So in a way, 
P, five dollars minus the three, that's your per unit profit. So P minus ATC is your per unit profit times the quantity that you sell, that gives you your overall profit. So that's a very useful interpretation of that. That's a very useful way to think about profit. That's your per unit profit, price minus ATC. Notice it's not price minus MC. Price minus MC is how much you make for the very last item in profits, because that's what marginal is. But that's, that's overall one way to think about it. But that's just what it is. How do you maximize profit? How do you make sure that that number is as high as can be? Well, the golden rule, I'll just sort of cut to the chase and then we'll sort of see why, but the golden rule of how to maximize profit is this. You want P to equal MC. If P equals MC, then your profits are gonna be as high as they can. Here's why. Let's say, going back to the banana example, your price, the price in the market, again, and again, you're a price taker in a perfectly competitive market. So your price, your demand is really horizontal. So if that's the price, you have to sell it at a price of one that's horizontal. So the question is, what quantity should you produce? Notice you can't even change the price, but what quantity, that's the decision you can make. What quantity gets you the most profits? Well, let's see. Let's say you're making this quantity. Well, the marginal cost, if you're making this quantity, again, numbers aside, so we're generalizing here. If you're making this quantity, it costs you this much to make the very last item and you sold it for $1, so you made a profit. But here's why you're not maximizing profits over here. Because you could make one more item, one more banana, and it's still, as long as the MC, the red value, is less than one, the black line over here, as long as the red value is less than it, you can make profits by selling an extra banana. So here, because you can make all the profits you did here, but sell one more banana for $1 and it costs you less than $1 to make it. So, you know, you're, you're making profits. So you can keep making more and more profits all the way up until here. If you're making this quantity, and that, by the way, is the quantity where P equals MC. That's where the black line intersects with the MC, the red curve. So that quantity is where you're maximizing your profits. Because again, anywhere before that, you want to make more of a quantity to make more profits. And on the other hand, here, if you were to produce even more, then you'd actually lose money because now it costs you more than the $1 to make it. So if you were to cost you $1.20 to make it and you sold it for a dollar, you'll lose 20 cents, right? So if you're anywhere here, you actually make more profits by going in this direction. And if you're anywhere here, you make more profits by producing more. So that's why we can say that profits are maximized where P equals MC. And we can also generalize that in general, if P is less than MC, like we saw at the very end over here, the price was less, then you want to decrease the quantity produced. And if P is greater than MC, like at the beginning, then you want to produce more, then you want to increase the quantity. So that is how you maximize profits. Now that's how to maximize profit and to actually see what your profits are, the actual number, one way to see it graphically is if you're given your ATC curve. So let's say this is the price of $1, the red curve here, and the MC is also this red curve here. Well, how do you maximize profits? P equals MC, so you know that this is the quantity. Go horizontally down, that's the quantity that maximizes profits. But then to see what your profits actually are, we can use this equation. So at that quantity, the price is one. And at that quantity, that's one, what's your ATC? So you could, you'd be given that if you know that equation. So let's say if that was 80 cents, for example, then that tells us that when we're maximizing profits, you know, we're charging a dollar, and on average, it's costing us our ATC at that quantity is 80 cents. So our profits are 20 cents per unit. So our P minus ATC is this high. This is P and that's ATC. So P minus ATC is, you know, this, this horizontal gap, this 20 cents. So that times the quantity. So if that was, you know, 200 bananas and that 20 cents per unit profit times 200 bananas, that's this rectangle. So you'll often see, you know, instructors or textbooks saying, oh yeah, your profits are this rectangle. And it might look confusing at first, but all they're doing is length times width. The width of this box is the quantity. And the height of this box is 
The difference between P and ATC, which is your per unit profit and length times width, gives you the area of a rectangle, but that also happens to be length times width is your profits.